Hey, today I'm talking about three brand new movies and their titles are King Richard, Ghostbusters Afterlife, and Tick, Tick, Boom! Last up is King Richard. This movie stars Will Smith and it is about the father of Venus and Serena Williams. And basically just about him very enthusiastically pushing his children into this career. And yeah, it was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Some reviews kind of say it as like a very by the numbers sports movie that's elevated by incredible performances. And I would agree with half of that. I think it's definitely elevated by really incredible performances. Will Smith is very transformative. He nails what Richard Williams acts like and looks like. He is Richard Williams in this movie. The woman who plays his wife does phenomenal and so do the young ladies who play Serena and Venus Williams. But I, I disagree with it. it's by the numbers story. Like obviously we know that it's gonna turn out well for the two girls but I think the steps that they went through aren't really like other sports movies. Especially because like this one doesn't focus on the girls, it focuses on their dad and him pushing the girls as much as he can. So to me it feels like a very unique story. I also have to give a shout out to John Bernthal. I love him in anything that he's in, but he just is such a standout here. I loved his mustache, his mannerisms, he just, oh god, he just comes in with such a force and then like he still's like an opposing guy, but then like he can play these soft characters that just kind of like crumble in certain situations with certain kinds of pressure. It's impressive what he can do. I just, I love John so much. He just, he nails everything that he's in. I need to watch way more of his movies. I haven't seen nearly enough. But yeah, it was, it was a really good, really well done movie. I definitely recommend it. I will say though, it is a long movie. It didn't feel long to me. I like saw the runtime right before I watched the movie and I was like, oh shoot, maybe I should have gotten some food before I watched this. But it, it, it really flew by. But if you find the runtime intimidating, I think that's fine. I would say just watch it at home and feel free to pause. It. I think you can definitely take breaks in this movie and it's not really gonna ruin your immersion or your enjoyment of the story. Next up is Ghostbusters Afterlife. This is the new Ghostbusters movie. It is a sequel to definitely the first Ghostbusters movie and probably the second Ghostbusters movie and maybe the Ghostbusters video game. I don't think they technically contradicted that. And if you're curious, the all-female 2016 Ghostbusters takes place in a different universe from this Ghostbusters, so it is not a follow-up to that. But the basic premise is it, it focuses on the child and grandchildren of one of the original Ghostbusters as they try to live their lives but then maybe some ghostly stuff starts happening and they need to deal with that instead. For context, I have seen the original Ghostbusters. It wasn't like a mainstay in my family home. It's probably middle school when I finally watched it and I did enjoy it a ton. I've seen it a few times. I don't have like super hard nostalgia but I do like it. So even though I'm not a hardcore fan, I still enjoyed this movie a ton. I will say it's not an all in all out comedy like the original was. This is definitely Definitely more of a lighthearted adventure film and I actually really really loved that just because I love that genre a lot and it was also smart to do a genre shift because they're never going to be able to like recapture the magic of the original one so it makes sense to do something different. All the actors did great. Paul Rudd was definitely a delight and McKenna Grace she just did incredible. She really did a solid job of carrying this movie. She was technically the main character which I was kind of surprised by but she she really nails those emotions and she's just entertaining to watch and I loved oh my god <laughs> Her older brother is kind of a dick and he tells her that she's an awkward person and she should learn a bunch of jokes to break awkward silences. And so she learns a bunch of jokes and she tells a bunch of jokes throughout the entire movie and they're all awful and amazing and I love them so much and that added so much to her character. I also love her psychic character podcast. He was hilarious. And yeah, this movie has a ton of heart and it's just, it works really, really well. I will say if you're a fan of the original Ghostbusters, it's definitely worth a watch. You're potentially going to cry at the end. I definitely recommend this in general though. I would say though you probably should watch at least the first Ghostbusters before seeing this just so you can kind of understand more context if you've never seen it before. Though if it's been a few years since you've seen Ghostbusters you're still probably fine. Though again the original Ghostbusters is a lot of fun so it doesn't hurt to watch that one. But yeah it's a good light-hearted fun adventure. You're definitely in for a treat of a time. 
Leslie is. Tick, tick, boom. I hate myself. This is Lynn Manuel's directorial debut. It is written by the man who wrote Rent. This was his second musical, and the story is actually about him attempting to get his first musical published. The trailer really impressed me, so I was kind of, you know, hopeful going into this movie. But then as it started, I was kind of like, I don't know if I can watch this. This is. This is really pretentious and that was a hard hurdle to get over of just like how <sighs> pretentious this movie is but I was able to get past that and actually enjoy this movie a ton it was a really really solid movie I think if you're a big theater nerd you've probably already seen this movie but you're gonna crazy crazy love this movie besides the absurd amount of cameos it has everything that's gonna connect with you on like a very deep personal level I'm not that kind of a theater nerd I'm more of a theater nerd light so I still enjoyed it a good amount but even if you're not a theater nerd I think it's possible to still connect to this movie especially if you are just a person who admire those who have the the drive to go after their dream even if their dream is crazy impossible but they're still just like dead set determined on it even when like hell is raining down and then they're still going for it like it's that kind of an inspirational movie i also want to say my favorite song was i believe it's called therapy it's the one where in real life the main character and his girlfriend are having a fight and it's basically kind of them breaking up but then in kind of fantasy world it's andrew garfield and vanessa hudgens sitting on chairs and they're just like so over the top and so ridiculous it's funny but then it also just kind of like makes the breakup scene kind of hurt more it's a really interesting balance and also andrew garfield does fantastic he really carries this movie it was a bit distracting just how old he is because he's supposed to be playing a 29 year old and he does not look like a 29 year old <sighs> But that being said, he actually does nail the look and mannerisms of the real life person, John, that the character is based on. So give him credit there. But yeah, I enjoyed this movie a good solid amount. I definitely recommend it, especially if you're a fan of musicals. It is a very powerful, emotional, good time. All right, now for today's rankings. First up, we got King Richard, number 17 in the really like section. And then not too terribly far behind, that is Ghostbusters Afterlife, student number 26 in the really like section. And then bringing up the rear is Tick Tick. Boom! Sitting number 39 in the quite like section. And this is out of a total of 73 new movies so far this year. And that brings the grand total out of all the movies I've seen so far this year up to 327.